Hi guys, welcome to Homestead Where You Are. My name is Janet. Today I'm going to be making some ground beef enchiladas. I am going to start by getting two pounds of ground beef cooked up. And then I'm going to make a chili gravy. And just so you know, I am doubling this recipe because I'm making two pans of enchiladas. But as I read the ingredients to you, I will be giving you just the single quantities. So we're going to start with a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. And we're going to get that heated up just a little bit. And then we're going to add one chopped up onion. I mean, I could check again. And since I doubled this recipe, I could have used two onions. I also could have put the onion in with the ground beef instead of in the gravy. But I find that if I cook it in with the ground beef and then drain the ground beef, I drain off a lot of flavor that I like from the onion. So this time I decided to put it in the gravy. Looks like the ground beef is cooking up nicely. All right, we're sauteing the onions a little bit. I don't want them too cooked, but I don't want them raw either. So there we go. I think we're about ready. Okay, we're going to add one teaspoon of black pepper. And it calls for one teaspoon of salt, but I don't add the salt because of the beef broth. It's usually salty enough. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of ground cumin. And then we are going to add two tablespoons of chili powder. And I like to use the Gebhardt's. Gives a much better flavor. Mix that in just a little bit. Now we're going to add our uh, quarter cup of all purpose flour. Blend that in real well. Try and get the starchy taste to cook off a little bit. Now it would be two cups of beef stock. And remember, that is four cups because I doubled the recipe, but the recipe calls for two cups. Get that whisked in a little bit. All right, now we're going to add one teaspoon of paprika. As you can see, I don't always measure. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of dried oregano.
I'm going to let that cook up a little bit while we whisk it. You can see it already starting to thicken up. Doesn't take very long. Ground beef is just about ready. And we are going to set the gravy off the heat. We don't want it to cook any longer. And now we're going to drain the ground beef. This recipe is how to make the whole enchilada. So you have to decipher which part is the gravy and which part is the, yeah. All right, I'm gonna add one can of chilies. And I will tell you after making this recipe, I should have added two cans. One wasn't quite enough. And then we're going to use La Victoria enchilada sauce. I'm going to put some of it in the ground beef and the rest of it in with the gravy. I like enchilada sauce. I just don't like it by itself or too much of it in the recipe because it's, it's too strong and too bitter. Right now I'm going to add one can, juice and all, of Rotel. Now I'm kind of stirring it up as I go just to see the consistency. That gravy is not lumpy. That's just the onions that you're seeing there. And then I have a can of Gebhardt's enchilada sauce. I'll put about half of it in the gravy and the other half in with the ground beef mixture. All right, I'm going to get both of those pushed to the back and kind of out of the way so that I can get my pan to start assembling. Now remember, I am making two pans. Uh, the second one, if we don't need it, I will put in the freezer and save it for another day. And I always put a little bit of my gravy or the enchilada sauce or whatever it is that I'm using in the bottom of the pan. It just helps keep the tortillas from sticking to the bottom. All 
All right, and now I'm just going to take my tortilla, which were previously uh, flash fried a little bit so that they would be soft. And I'm just going to roll the mixture inside. We like a lot of meat in ours, so. All right, this pan is almost full. And all I do is roll it and then tuck the bottom the seam on the bottom so that uh, it stays closed. All right, now I'm going to move my second pan over here, get it assembly, assembled. Just going to repeat this process until I finish the last of what's here. Alright, and I'm just going to pour the rest of the meat mixture in with the gravy. Mixed it up, and then I'm going to pour that over the top of both pans. Right now I am going to top with cheese and I didn't want to have to shred any more cheese. You can use whatever you want. Colby Jack would be good. But I want I just used what I had already shredded up and ready. So I'm using some sharp cheddar, which is my favorite. And then I will top it off with the rest of the Colby Jack that I had. I'm going to set that second pan off to the side. I'm going to put the first one in the oven. Uh, I already have it preheated to 350. It will take about probably 20 minutes or so. you got to remember things already cooked, so it's just a matter of heating it up. Clean up my mess a little bit. I tend to be a messy cook. <laughs> And I'm just going to put the lid on that. We cook it if we need to, but if not, as I said, I'll put it in the freezer. And I decided to make this taco rice on the side just to have with it. And by the time the rice is done, the enchiladas will be ready.
And there's nothing special about the rice. I just used, made it according to the package. And here is my husband divvying up his plate. <laughs> It turned out wonderful, guys. Thank you for joining me. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I appreciate you guys. I hope I see you on the next one. Have a great day, guys.